Glory to God. Ain't God good?
and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Mm -hmm. Notice something. Uh -huh. It says, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. This person wasn't speaking from the earth. And they're giving praise in heaven that the accuser, mm -hmm. Satan, is being cast out. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Look at it. Look at it closely. Yeah. Look at it. And I heard a loud voice saying, where? In heaven. In heaven. In heaven. Okay, that's where God dwells. Uh -huh. Because we know that there are three heavens. The sky is the first heaven. Stars in the second, but the third heaven is where God dwells. All right. So this is where the now, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, "Now is come salvation." Uh -huh. mm. right. I thought folk in heaven were already saved. Uh -huh. Oh my God! What? You know, salvation also means deliverance. Yeah. So you just don't get saved once. You know, being saved is a lifetime of being delivered. Glory to God. Amen. You know, my soul got saved today. Next year, I might have got delivered from cancer. Yeah, it's a process. That's exactly what it is. So he said, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser. Mm. Well, and you know, you, you look up that word accuser, it actually it deals with a prosecuting attorney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh -huh. A prosecuting attorney. Uh -huh. yeah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, down. down, which accused them day and night before our God. Wait a minute, these Whoa. people are in heaven, and Satan is in heaven accusing them. Yeah. And they're saying that they're glad that there is a day where Satan is being kicked out. Yes. Watch it now. Watch it. All right. Watch it. Because this is taking place at the same time that the judgment and the reward is taking place for the church. Oh, yes, sir. Look at Revelations 11 and 18. Right next to it. It says, and the nations were angry and thy wrath come and the time of the dead, and they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give rewards unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name. This is called, in, in verse 18, that's the bema. That's for the church, where the church gets its reward. Watch this now. And at the same time that this reward is being given, glory to God, Satan is being kicked out of heaven. Why? Because Jewish tradition tells us, glory to God, the Jews have been teaching this for the longest, that this is the time of atonement. And during the time of atonement, Satan's voice, God silences Satan's voice because it's time for God to make atonement because the, the saints of God are seeking repentance. So during this time of reward, God decides to kick Satan out. Watch this now. Pay close attention. Which, uh, the latter part of verse 10, which, which accused them day and night before our God. Okay. Before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Verse 12 is where I really want to focus. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Watch this. Why are they rejoicing in heaven? Because the accuser has just been kicked out. Amen. Come on now, give me your eyes on here because some of y'all looking at me a little funny. Come on, sir. Like I'm messing with your theology or something. Speak the Lord. Speak the Lord. Watch this right here. Satan has access to heaven. Come on, when he dealt with Job, Satan, where are you coming from? He said, I come from going to and fro in the earth. He had access to heaven. Amen. Amen. So here, during the Bema, the judgment, God silences his voice and kicks him out. But notice it said in verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens. They're happy because the accuser of their brethren that's accusing them day and night has been kicked out. Come on, amen. 
But it says, and ye that and ye that dwell in them, but a curse is pronounced on the earth. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth he has for a short time. Now, I, I, I need for you to give me your eyes right here for a second. I'm not sure. I don't think this has happened yet. Amen. Amen. But we are right at the door of it happening. Yeah. Amen. Because according to the book of Daniel, y'all follow me. According to the book of Daniel, we're living in week 69. Right. Come on. Right. The Lord declared 70 weeks under Daniel. Yes. Yeah. We're about to step over into the 70th week. And the 70th week represents Jacob's trouble. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we are right at the end of time. So I'm bringing this message today because he said, those who, who are in heaven are rejoicing because the, the accuser has been kicked out. Amen. But he says, woo unto the inhabitants of the earth. Yeah. Give me your eyes right here. Is it possible? I made a statement. The closer we get to the rapture of the church, I believe evil is going to increase. Uh -huh. yeah, that's wow, that's wow. Really Yes, oh, help me up in here because doesn't it say something about it to be as in the days of Noah? Yes. There'll be seven, the, you know, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, very few of that generation were saved. Come on. Amen. Noah and his household were saved. The rest of the world were banqueting and partying. Yeah. Glory to God. But this message today is for the church. And the message is you need to wake up dressed. You need to wake up with your armor on. You can't afford to get up and get dressed. You got to sleep with your armor on because of the attacks of the enemy. Because we're living in a season where the actually evil is going to increase. And for those of you who look at the news, Anytime the nation of Israel is under attack, the church is under attack. That's right. There is a spiritual paradigm that you got to look at. Amen. Israel is under attack right now. They're being bombarded with rockets from Hamas. We're living right at the end of the age. The enemy is increasing his attack. I want to remind the church of something. I want to remind the church about a, 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 an apostle called Judas. Yeah. Well, Amen. Uh -huh. Judas is scary. Now, yeah. now the church portrays him in a very negative light. Yeah. But I told the church from my studies, Judas was faithful. Always was faithful. Yeah. Judas made the same sacrifice the rest of the apostles did. Peter left his business. Judas left what he was doing to follow Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. He walked with Jesus and was there with him the whole time. Yeah. But my concern is the Bible says that Satan entered in. To Judas. And that's what I'm trying to get the church. We need to be on God. For in these last and evil days, the enemy desires to enter into you. And it, it's been taught, I, I can remember as a young saint in the church, it was taught, uh, you, you, you would hear scriptures being used like this light and darkness could not dwell together. And it would be taught and used in a way that to say a child of God, once they're saved, cannot have a devil. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, 20 years on the other side, I don't believe that no more. Oh, help me up here. The Bible says Satan entered into Judas, who was not only saved, right. but was an apostle and walking in an anointing of an apostle. Right. You're not hearing what I'm saying today, but Judas had a problem. Judas, Judas was not honest. Yeah. Right. Ooh, say wow. that. Say that. Yeah. I'm going someplace today. You better be careful with those old pet sins that you still have on display in your life. Because those pet sins are a doorway or an entranceway for Satan to enter in. And I told the church, when he entered in, it was right at time of communion. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were taking communion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If Judas was alive today on the face of the earth, the day he had one of the biggest churches in the world because of his anointed. This was an anointed apostle who walked with Jesus. You got to understand this now. 
or help me up in here. Amen. But Satan entered. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because of those little private pet sins. And I'm telling you, the Bible says, let a man examine himself. <laughs> For the last two months, every message that I preach, I've talked about the ten virgins. I don't care what the title of the message was, I ended up mentioning the ten verses. I believe we are so close to the rapture of the church. I personally believe that. Amen. And I believe it's a time for us to walk individually circumspectly. Yes. I believe it's a time for us to be very, very careful. I believe it's a time for us to close every entrance way into our life. Whether you struggle with lying, whether you're struggling with lust, come on, whether you're struggling with grief, whatever it is, whether you got an anger problem, close the door. Because if you don't, Satan is going to use it to enter in. Yes. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. That's the, that's the first part of my message. Now I need for you to turn over to Psalms 63. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. I thank you. I think one of the healthiest things that a child of God can do right now, during this season that we're living in, is to have the spirit of David. Well, wow. David was a worshiper. Amen. Not only was David a worshiper, David was a man who could not get enough of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, his, satis his appetite for God was never satisfied. Are y'all in here? Thank you, Jesus. No matter what level God brought David on, David was looking to be closer. Yes. Glory to God. The Bible talks about going from glory to glory. Glory increasing, not, never talks about it decreasing. Amen. So in Psalm 63, y'all pray with me. I think this is a good mindset to have today. Glory to God, seeing we are so close, but we have not yet arrived. We're close, but we haven't arrived. So we, we haven't heard him say, uh, uh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Glory to God, so there is a chance. The enemy, Satan still feels he has a chance to get you. Well, if he didn't feel he had a chance to get you, he wouldn't be pursuing you the way that he is. Yes, yes. Or thank you, Jesus. He's turned the hearts of other saved men He's turned the hearts of other same women. Yep, yep. There are people who used to walk with God. Yes. I'm aware of the fact right now we got preachers in, in America who are shutting down their churches and denying the name of Christ. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Here we are today. Yeah. Yeah. Bible talks about this great falling away, great falling away, that apostasy. Right. Mm. In Psalm 63, I think we need to walk in this. Notice what David said in verse 1. David said, oh God, thou art my God. Wait a minute. Can I tell you something? Everybody who names the name of Jesus, God is their God. If you want to know who the God they serve, watch who they turn to in times of trouble. David said, thou art my God. In other words, to me it sounded personal. Uh, David sounded like to me, he said, look, I've looked all over. All right. I've already served this God. I've already served that God. I've already yeah. been down there. I've, I've had all the pleasure. Yeah. Been with all the women I can be with. Yeah. You know, the way I see this thing, ain't but one God. Yeah. And I'm making that one God my yeah. God. Yeah. I hope y'all feel me up in here today. Yeah. He said, and notice that you study the text. He didn't say that, oh God. No, 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 no. David put passion. If you were there when David was saying this, it was like the sister dancing. David said, oh God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, said, it ain't my son. Oh God, thou art my God. He said, watch this early. Somebody told me one time that you meet God first in the morning, you can meet anybody else later. Hey, I like that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. All these devils and demons waiting on you. Glory to God. Setting up ambush for you, but you meet Jesus first. David said, early will I seek you. Mm, mm, mm. 
And if I had to put a title on this message today, it would come from verse 8. It, and the title would be, Follow Hard After God. Wow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Notice David's priority in verse 1. First of all, he lets you know this is my God. This is my priority. This is who I'm seeking first. When I open my eyes in the morning, my mind is on you. Yes, sir. Glory to God. I've come to it. I've determined something in my life. And what I've determined in my life is in you I live. In you I move. In you I have my being. Yes, sir. That's good word. Good. Ebony says that all the other names fade away. Are y'all y'all feeling this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. Then he said, My soul first. <laughs> Watch this right here. Glory to God. Uh, your soul becoming thirsty is a process. Anymore, shut up. Because we were born in sin and shaped with iniquity. In other words, my appetite when I was born, I was thirsty for sin. Amen. So then, when I get saved, I got to retrain my soul. That's right. Mm, thank you, Lord. My soul has to be reprogrammed, and my soul is the place of uh, my emotions. Come on. My soul houses my spirit. Amen. So glory to God. What is David saying? David said, wait a minute, look at what he said. He said, my soul thirsts. In other words, my soul stays in a place of need. I keep my soul in a place of need. David is always thirsty for God. What is his posture? I can't get enough of Jesus. David was a spiritual junkie, if I could say the word. David was addicted to the Lord. My soul thirst. How do you keep your soul thirsty? Your imagination can help you keep your soul thirsty. You want to know how? Glory to God. How many of you, when you were younger, uh, 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 you, know, you know what it feels like to imagine sinning before you ever sinned? Come on, come on, come on, Lord. If I could just do this right here. If I, could, if I could just do this right here. I see myself doing it. Glory to God. And you see yourself doing it enough after a while you go do it. Your imagination can help your soul stay thirsty. How? Just go back. Use your imagination. Go back into that old life. Huh. What I mean by that, that old life, no matter how good it was, I was condemned to hell. If I would have died in that old life, I would have woken up, I would have lifted up my eyes in hell. Amen. So since I can imagine that, it keeps my soul thirsty. Yeah. Ah, that's good. I'm not going to say I'm just seeking, I'm just hungry, and I'm thirsty. Then he said, and, and you can connect it. I feel David did that here when he was writing the song. Remember, David was a songstress. He was a musician. So David knew how to use his creative imagination. Notice now, he came right after that and said, my flesh longeth for thee. Come on, give me your eyes right here. How many of you know when you got saved, your flesh may not have been saved? He saved our spirit. Amen. Our flesh stepped into a process called sanct sanctification. We started that process when we got saved of separating and denying ourselves. Come on. Amen. Who are you got? I know for who got saved when I got drunk. Who are you got? Now don't get me wrong. Notice I said they were saved. They gave their life to the Lord. But they were used to doing this. Uh -huh. yeah. So David said, my, he said, my, uh, my flesh longeth for thee. Which is a, it's a testimony of a confession from a process. My I've trained my soul, I've trained my flesh. Thank you, Jesus. In a dry and thirsty place where there is no water. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I, I stay thirsty for God because I can't drink enough. What am I thirsty for? Verse 2, to see thy power. Come on. 
Give me your eyes right here. How many of you have been saved and walking with him for a long time? But there are certain prayers you've been praying for a long time. Yes. Come on. I wish it was that when we got saved, all of our challenges just disappeared. <laughs> I mean, we got saved, the cancer left, the arthritis left, left, everything left all in one day, one quick service. I'm just whole. You know, I wish it was like that, but it ain't like that. Amen. You got people who are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, but they got illnesses and challenges in their body. Amen. Lord, I give you praise. So David writes, David said, Lord, I want to see your power. I don't know about you. I've been pastoring for 20 years, but there are certain areas I have not been able to see the power of God in those areas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In those areas, I'm still in the place of requesting and, 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 and asking God to show himself in those areas. Amen. I'm not, I know he can do it. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. But knowing what he can do for somebody else, sometimes that ain't good enough for me. Yeah. Lord, you did it for him. Can you do it for me? me. Yes, sir. I'm going to see your power. Yes, sir. That's my son down there on drugs. Uh -huh. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. I want to see your power. To see thy power and thy glory. You know, man was created in glory. Man was created in an environment. He was created in glory. That's an environment where God is in complete control. Glory, glory, glory. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise. That's an environment where the power and the display of God is on display. He said, wait a minute. I want to see your power and I want to see your glory. Then he compared it, so as I have seen it, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. So David has seen God move in power. He saw God move in power, and that's why somebody wrote the song and said, take me back, oh Lord. Lord, I give you praise today. I, I give you praise. I told you the title of this message is, let's follow hard after God. And I just want to give you a few reasons why you need to follow hard after God. Go over to Philippians chapter 3. And I'm almost done. I hope y'all getting something from what I'm trying to say. Amen. Yes, sir. This is a teaching ministry. We do, we do get to the shout, though. We, 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 do, we, do get to, we do get to the shout. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I told the church before you can shout all you want. The, the enemy will sit right there. You don't know nothing. He'll wait for you to come down. And tear you up because you don't know nothing. If anybody knows about following hard after God. Let me, let me read to you what I wrote. What does following hard after God really mean? I wrote this down. It means that David made a decision for his life that seeking God's way of doing things is the best decision I could ever make. He, he came to a point in his life and said, you know, not my will, Lord. Jesus had to come to that same conclusion. Not my will. Every time I do it my way, I mess up. I know that's right. <laughs> so, 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 following hard after God, David made a decision for his life that seeking God's way of doing things is the best decision I can make in this life. Watch this. And it's right every time. Because in Him I live, in Him I move, and in Him I have my life. <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm. I wrote this down, following hard after God requires sacrifice. sacrifice. Yes. Romans tells us we need to heal our bodies. Yes. A living sacrifice. Yes. You have not yet matured in Christ until you can tell yourself no. Yes. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. I don't know why I'm only not crave it, but no. Thank you, Lord. 
it requires denying yourself. If anybody knows about this, it's Paul. Paul writes over in Ephesians 3, uh, starting in verse 7, he said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Wait a minute, this thing is beneficiary to me. I can do this and I can gain it. It, 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 it pads my pocket. It does this. Paul said, I ain't doing it. Oh, glory to God. See, see the closer, I, I forget, Tommy Tim wrote a book years ago, God Chases. God Chases. And you can't, you can't, you can't walk with God's pace and walk, with, and walk in your own time. The closer I get to God, the less of me I see. Yes, Come on, yes. I'm talking about from a personal perspective because I, I, I thank God I have prayed. I said, Lord, help me to have the spirit that David had, had that I hunger and thirst after you. Not one day, every day. Every day. Amen. How many of you have ever had a day in your life since you were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost when you had pockets full of money? Oh. You're driving what you want to drive. Yes. Come yeah. living where you want to live. Yeah. Being able to go out and eat and have a good time anytime you want. I found myself there, but I found myself hungry. Yeah. I said, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I'm wearing the shoes I want to wear. I'm living in the house. I got the wife that I've been craving after. I got some money in my pocket, but there's something missing. Wow. Uh, there's a part of me that's still empty and uh -huh. unfilled. Well, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying today? I told the church, listen, God will put a scratch in you that only, a uh, itch in you that only he can scratch. Yeah. Lord, I give you praise, I give you glory. I can remember, I can remember eating at the best of restaurants, going to the best movies, seeing the best entertainment, being with the my wife who was beautiful, loving, and that night before I went to bed, there was something missing. Amazing. I'm sitting on the couch, Sister Talia, trying to find what is it I already, I already ate the filet mignon. I already had the shrimp. I went, what is it? My what wife said, uh, you seeking for the Lord. <laughs> See, I made the mistake before going back and got seconds. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I wanted some more to eat. I was hungry. Something else. Well, Paul said, "Those things that were gained to me, I count them loss." In my mind, shut me. Look at verse eight. He said, "Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss." Uh, Jesus was speaking to this rich young ruler one day. Rich young ruler said, "Lord, what must I do to gain eternal life?" Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory up in this house. He said, well, you, you know, honor your father, honor your mother, those kind of things. The young, young ruler said, well, you know, I've done all that. Jesus said, okay. You think you know it all. I'll tell you what. Go and sell all that you got. Go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. The Bible says he choked on that because he had great wealth. What is your richest possession? What is your richest possession, Pastor? What is the one thing in your life you can't do without? Couldn't be another. Somebody said, in him I live. In him I move. And in him I have my being. Couldn't be at all my shut or any more. Y'all alright with this? Mm. One reason why we need to follow hard after God in order that we may know him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. Somebody said, well, I know, I know the Lord. I've been walking with him for a long time. But why you got all these questions? When you get by yourself late at night, why you got all these questions if you know him so well? 
I can quote the Bible pretty good. I'm, I've been studying it for about 20 years now. I'm, you know, they gave me a doctor's degree, all that kind of stuff. I, I think I'm sort of educated. But when I get home late at night, my wife goes to bed, 12, 30, 1 o'clock, I'm sitting up in that living room, I'm looking up. Lord, how do I do this? <laughs> yes, sir. Then he said, if you seek. Yay! Watch it. Watch it. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. One reason why you need to follow hard after him is so you can know him. Know him. I don't know if this makes any sense. The great apostle Paul. Yes, sir. Verse 8 says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency. The word excellency is used of dignitaries. It means an outstanding, valuable quality. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done, that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Yeah. But look at verse 10. Yeah. That I may whoa, whoa, wait a minute now. Paul wrote 13 books of the New Testament. Paul had more knowledge than Peter and the rest of them put together. Paul was taught by Gamaliel. And he had a private session with the Holy Ghost out there. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. So Paul didn't, Paul didn't have no kind of, he didn't fear none of the apostles. He knew he had more knowledge, he had more revelation than they did. But he comes back in Philippians and said that I may know him. Why am I seeking him? Why am I following hard after him? Because life poses certain questions that I have not been able to answer yet. But he tells me if I seek, I'm going to find See, I want to I want to I want to know even as I am known. Oh God, I hope I'm making some sense today. Y'all mm, pray with me. Another reason Number two is because we are so imperfect. Yeah. Oh, help me up in there. You know, God said there is a way. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. You're right now. Moses thought it was cool because he got angry. Threw the Ten Commandments down. He thought the anger <laughs> gave him an excuse to us. Oh my God! The Lord had to, had to make him another one. <laughs> because we're so glory to God. There is a way that seemeth right. I wish I could tell you since I've been pastors, every decision I made was right. I wish I could tell you that. But I'd be lying. Amen. 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 I've made some wrong choices, and every choice I've made for my emotions was wrong. Amen. Every one of them. Yes, sir. Oh, glory to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Help me, Jesus. But there was a way during the time that I was discussing it with the three people that's most important to me at that time, me, myself, and I. I was discussing it with them. All three of them told me that that's right. But then when the dust cleared and the anger was gone, you came down. Forgive me, Lord, I've sinned. So, number one, and so we may know him. Yeah. David said, I follow hard after yeah. I done made a decision. Help me up in here. Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all got a new haul in your yard? You plan on taking all the furniture? Come on. Plan on taking that big 65 inch screen, all that up to heaven. Ain't no room for it. No. Ain't gonna do you no good. That 5,000 square foot house can't go. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. 
I need to know him. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to throw this in there for free. I want to know it because I ain't never died before. Well, I know preachers that say they ain't scared. I told them, you need to pray for me. I ain't never did that before. Come on. Or help me up in here. I want to know as much of Christ as I can know. I believe we can get to the point because the Bible talks about going from glory to glory. Uh, Y'all just got to pray for me up in here. And remember my opening text when I said Satan has come down right. in great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. So then when he comes, I don't believe that has happened yet, but I believe we're, we're right there. It's going to happen because anybody, if you got any kind of sense, you can see evil is increasing in the earth. It ain't decreasing. It is increasing. They killed eight people in Charleston in a prayer meeting. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yeah. But watch this. Let me tell you how bad this world is we're living in. Most of us didn't forget about that. Because so much tragedy has happened since then. So tragic stuff is happening every day. Every day. They locked the preacher up in, in Canada and kicked him out of his church. Yes, sir. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? I want you to know there are, there are bills being passed in, in, in our government right now to make it hard on pastors. Yes, sir. To make it hard on churches. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. They done took prayer out of school. Yeah. You don't watch it? Wait a minute. They took prayer out of school. They took the saints out of their churches. Open your eyes. Most of the churches in the country are closed. <laughs> and I don't care what nobody says. I can't have church on Facebook the way I can have it in the sanctuary. Wow. Talk about a release. Mm. Ooh, Jesus. Anybody getting anything out of this? Yes, sir. But the Bible says that he's a reward. That means every question that I have as it relates to, because I'm going to be honest with you, God's my father, but he's mysterious to me. Maybe, maybe some of y'all know him better, but he's mysterious to me. You know, he told Moses, I'll let you see my backside. In other words, I ain't never let me, I ain't never tell you the whole thing. You know, never see the whole thing. So ain't, ain't no need to ask me that because I already, already made a mistake and showed somebody some. And he, he changed his name from Lucifer to Satan because he saw a little bit. Of, so he said, I ain't showing sure nobody. Wow. Are y'all are y'all catching it? Yeah. That which God doesn't share keeps him as being God and God alone. Yeah. But that I may mean, know him. Mm, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm just about uh, I'm just about I'm just about I'm just about finish. Uh, I'm gonna finish right here. Go to Mark 11. Finish right here. My son and my daughter-in-law over here to my left. God has a work for y'all to do. Amen. Yes, yes. God has ministry yes. for y'all. Yeah. Even Jesus had to get to the point and said, not my will. But thy will be done. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's what he said. God has his hands on you, Chris. Yes. And he got his hands on your wife. Yes. Glory to God. Your wife got preacher written all over her. Woo. I don't care how much she denies it. I don't care where she goes. I don't care what happens. Glory to God. Y'all got ministry on y'all. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Here God, here God. Pastor Scott got ministry on her. Here God. Glory to God. Here God. Lord, help me up again. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
That young, that young lady back there got an anointing on her. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Talk about it. Oh, shit, it ain't Speak, Lord. I serve you here. It ain't I told her, I said, I'm just going to lay the groundwork for you. The Lord going to use me to lay the groundwork for you to be able to run. Amen. Especially if the three of y'all get together. Wow. Oh, God, I give you praise. I give you wow. glory. We all ready, man. Another reason for following hard after God. Let's see, can I get over here at the right page? Um, Mark 11 We're going to finish right here Lord I bless your name Oh thank you Jesus There's an anointing coming to the body of Christ I know we've been hearing about it For the longest But there is uh, Watch this There is a wealth transfer coming now, now that's just not Something that was preached From greedy preachers Trying to use a strength. No, there is a wealth transfer Amen. coming. Because if you notice something, his, 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 his the rapture, he says, it's going to be as in the days of Noah. That's right. When, what were they doing? Eating, drinking. They ain't going to be no shortage. Amen. Oh, think about that. Catch that revelation. Yeah. Yeah. He said, they're eating and drinking and marrying right before I come. There's plenty of everything. Amen. So the church gonna have some of it. <laughs> the church gonna have some of that. Come on, Come on, I told you the first reason to follow hard after him was that we might know him. The second reason was because we're so imperfect. And the third reason was because he is a rewarder. Rewarder. In Mark 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, oh, I like that. I like it. I, I like the fact that you can say just the deacons, just the praise team leaders, the bishops. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Jesus. Be thou removed. Now wait a minute. I want you to notice something. Who shall ever shall say? Wait a minute. Words are an expression That's right. of my desire. That's right. Well, follow me with this. I'm almost done. If I'm speaking something, I'm speaking to you about what I did. Sorry. Watch it now. Pay close attention. For verily I say unto you that what's, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, that's the key, yeah. that these things which he saith shall come to pass. Watch this. Notice now, he's dealing with time. They shall come to pass. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm about, I'm, 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 about, I'm, I'm about finished right here. Oh, shit. You remember, you remember when Jesus came walking and the, the disciples thought it was a ghost. But the, I, I guess he got close enough so they could see. Peter still had doubts. Peter said, Lord, if that's you, <laughs> Bid me to come down. Wait a minute. I'm going to paraphrase it. Jesus said, Come on. I'm trying to be spiritual. Okay. Come on. Glory to God. But Peter sunk. And the Lord said, O oh, ye of. What's the little thing? Because wait a minute. Weren't we told that if you just had faith as a, a grain, wait a minute, a grain is little. So a grain is little. So how can Jesus rebuke me for having 
Mosaic. Yeah. What was he talking about? Here's a revelation to the church. A lot of folks miss it. He wasn't talking about the size of Peter's faith. Amen. He was talking about how long he stayed in it. Yeah. Oh, you see, because he stepped out, then he took his eyes and he saw. What was the goal? The goal was to walk to Jesus. If he'd have stayed in it long enough, he'd have walked right over to Jesus. Oh yeah, literally. I'm going someplace, I'm going someplace, I'm going someplace. Verse 23 talks about our desires. I desire for this mountain to be moved. Come up to verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, Watch it. What things soever you desire. Now the word desire comes from the Latin language. Watch this. It uses two prefixes. D mm. and the word D means of. Zaya meaning the Father. Oh Jesus. Whatever you deem of, Zion, the Father. <laughs> Wait a minute. Therefore I say unto you, what, so things, what things soever you desire when you pray. Oh my God. Bishop Booker, do you know what this text is talking about? Do we, it's actually saying, the word desire means something missing. Yeah. In the Latin, it means something missing. Yeah. Because I don't desire anything I already have. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. That's why he said, speak to the mountain. The mountain is in my way. I desire for it to go. And it's of God. He's a reward to them that diligently seek him. We're living in no seasons, church. We're living in the season. You can get what you want. No, let me rephrase that. You can get the promise. You can get the promise. God is ready to fulfill. He's ready to give us the promise right now. In the name of Jesus. And when we come together as a church, any good thing can happen. The power of God is in this place right now. Can I tell you something? We don't have a problem with praising. The reason why you don't have what you've been seeking after God for is not because you're not a praiser. It's not because you don't pray enough. The enemy's been pulling the wool alive, but if I just pray a little more, God heard you the first time. Then he told us, he said, don't think you're going to be heard for your much saying. Oh, I know what you want before you came. Now you don't want to sit here. There is a time and a place and a season for all things. I believe we've gotten to the point with God, in God, that God is ready to give us the desires of our hearts. Glory to God. The Lord has already always desired a group of people that he could show off to the world. Don't I'm getting what I'm saying? God handpicked. He, went, he said, he told Israel, I didn't pick you because you were the best and all right, I found you polluted in your own blood. Oh glory to God. God was looking and searching the face of the earth for a group of people that was downcast. Glory to God. The scum of the earth so he can pick them up and give them a lifestyle to the envy of the rest of the world. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? The best of the church's days are not behind us. The best days are yet before us. Bishop, keep on living. Bishop, keep on holding on. The best is yet to come. I wish I had a church that could believe that. Guy. Because the Lord is my life, is my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Stay going home and camp around about me. I will not fear. That nay in all things, we are more than they, nay in all things, we are more than
that thing that you've been desiring for a long time. Come on, sir. Come on, Lord. The enemy boy. He said, your eyes will not close until you see it. Until you walk. Hey, until you walk in it. Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise. Let's give God a praise of those house. Bueno. 